Hey friends, welcome back. This is episode number 16, and we are going to spend just a little more time here in this uh, reformed Team Plasma hideout before we go get our fifth member of our team. We're taking care of the Pokemon whose trainers we can't find. I know it seems arrogant, but it's a small way to make up for what we've done. All right, well, it does sound like they're trying to at least make an effort to find the other Pokemon, so that's good. You can't change the past, but you can change the future. That's why I changed my outfit. I can still fit into the old one, though. Really? Mm-hmm. Likely story. I was thinking he's like some random hiker that just like volunteered to help them return the Pokemon, but I guess not. I guess he's also X-Team Plasma. But at least they're reformed. I'm waiting for my Lord End to return. He can talk to Pokemon. If he comes back, we can find out what the Pokemon here want. Oh, that's kind of a cool idea that, you know, like maybe they could actually have these Pokemon tell them more about their trainer to help them locate it. If only N would come back and uh, help them out. Oh, and these two, they were the ones that raised N, like his babysitters. Team Plasma is an organization created by a man named Getsis to help him take over the Unova region. The one he groomed to help him further his nefarious aims was N. N was a strange boy who was called the child of the Pokemon. I guess they're here in case uh, you didn't play the original games and don't really know what's going on. N was an orphan. I heard that right after he was born, he upset people with behavior that suggested he could talk to Pokemon. When he was living in the woods with our Manitan and Zorua, Getsis took him in. We are also orphans Getsis took in. Getsis took in. Our task was to take care of N. So they're kind of like his big sisters, I guess. This Pokemon has become attached to me. That's why I'm treating it like a friend and not like a tool. Well, that's nice of you, but I think you should still probably return it to its original trainer. Since uh, I'm sure they miss it too, and I'm sure... Petra misses them. So I guess the Zorua that you can get is actually, um, this little guy here, is actually the one that N must have uh, grown up with. That's kind of cool. Funnily enough, um, as I was confirming that we can get, indeed get the Pokemon we want on the next route, I also saw that you can get one as a gift on the next route. But we're not going to do that because I want one with a specific ability, so... Um, this might be a rival battle. Let's check it out. Challenging the gym, huh? Nice. Keep getting stronger. Let me tell you, though, play is tough. Even if you, even if all you have to use against ground types is water type Pokemon, you might still be in for a rough fight. All right. So a little bit of advice, not a battle, though. It feels like we should be battling him again soon. It's been a little while. Um, okay. Anything else to see in this town before we head westward? And there's some houses. Very interesting houses or apartment buildings, maybe. Yeah. The hotel. There are no rooms open, but I can relax in the lobby. So I'm guessing if we go to the elevator, there are no options. There is. Okay. Well, let's check it out. I'm getting flashbacks to uh, Castellia City. Uh, was your mother working at a Pokemon Center as a receptionist? Mm, I don't think so. I'll let you guys, uh, it's weird they have rooms with no, I guess like a dual suite, maybe that's like their mom or something, I hope. Otherwise, the uh, rooms with no doors is really weird. Although, you know what, I guess it's weird anyway, because like somebody comes off the elevator, they're right in your room. That's, that's super weird. And I'm surprised they're uh, all sold out with, uh, um, with a layout like this. A uh, big route, okay. That, uh, yeah, increases the HP you drain when you use a move like Giga Drain or Drain Punch. But we don't have those moves, so it doesn't really help us any. This must be the, uh, the Luxury Penthouse Suite. Alright. I've been lucky enough to get upgraded occasionally in hotels before when they have extra rooms, but never to the Penthouse Suite. Definitely can't afford that. Trick fails gone and changed so much, I thought I'd been harn harnschwaggled. What's that word? Oh, horn, yeah, Hornswoggle. Okay, haven't heard that one before. At least I don't think I have. Yeah, okay. Well, that's right, the Pokemon World Tournament. We'll have to check that out, too. Which, again, I think is another, like, post-game thing. But it's definitely something I want to participate in once we uh, beat the Pokemon League. Um, and face off against, we can face off against some of the old gym leaders and the champions from previous games. Did the market already? So there's the world tournament. All right, let's check out one more house just in case there's something interesting in here. Um, of 
not really a house again. And um, then we'll head out into the wilds. So I did look up the, um, not the levels or the Pokemon that Clay has, because I want to go in not knowing and, you know, see what happens. But um, it looks like his gym trainers have Pokemon up to level 34 in challenge mode. And there are a decent number of them. So... Aww. What was it? Three years ago, Team Plasma talked to me into letting my dear Pokemon go. Ever since, I've been staying in hotels as I please. To be honest, I feel lonely, but it's a good thing not to have Pokemon who will be left behind and feel sad after I pass away. Well, that's sad on so many different levels. Well, let's go find a new Pokemon to cheer ourselves up then. Um, okay, so what was I saying? Okay, so to face the gym, um, I think we'll probably get our team to level 33 or so. And I imagine just by facing all the trainers in the gym, we'll probably get them all to level 34, give or take. Um, and we'll see how that goes. You know, like last time, if we don't beat it, then I can always trample a little bit more and try again. Or just try different strategies, etc. Oh, actually, you know what? Sorry, this will be really quickly. I should have done this off screen, but we're right here. Before we go into the, uh, the West Woods there, um, not their real name, it's actually called Route 6. Um, I am going to store some Pokemon in the box here. Um, and the reason I'm going to do that is because when we catch our Pokemon, I want to catch one. Oops, oh, this is a little weird. I don't like how the box moves on you. Um, I'm going to actually be a little bit risky here and go down to just two Pokemon. We may find some trainers that might be a little bit tough, but um, the reason I want to do that is because the Pokemon that we're trying to find can have one of two abilities. Um, really one of three abilities if you include its hidden ability. And the one you could get as a gift Pokemon would always have its hidden ability. Um, and that hidden ability is called Serene Grace. It's actually a really cool ability, one of my favorites in the entire game. It's a really fun one. It means the secondary effect of any um, of any move you have, the chance of that secondary effect happening is doubled. So for example, Stomp normally has a 30% flinch chance. If you have Serene Grace, it has 60% flinch chance. Or Flamethrower has a 10% burn chance. If you, um, well, that's right, we're actually Nim, tricked myself there. Uh, so Flamethrower would have a 20% burn chance instead of 10%, etc. Um, but the reason I don't like it on this Pokemon is it really doesn't have a lot of moves that have secondary effects. So it's really kind of a weird Pokemon to have it on. And in fact, the moves that I intend to use, um, I don't think we'll have any moves, maybe one that it'll actually work on. So instead I'm gonna go for one of its normal abilities. But because it can have two, and because I want um, a male one, just because the nickname I have planned is a kind of male sounding nickname, um, this might take a few tries. So bear with me here. I think I will run away from any other Pokemon we find because I don't wanna keep taking damage and I'm pretty sure we can get the levels we need just by facing these trainers. No, it is not Shelmet. Shelmet is uh, kind of slow. Not sure I want to train in this Cavalier. I wouldn't mind training Excelgore. Um, it's a decent bug type. It's fast and has a good special attack stat, which normally would be like major pluses. The only thing I don't really love about Excelgore is that it doesn't have a great move pool. It can learn like Bug Buzz, Focus Blast, Energy Ball, um, but that's kind of about it. But here we go. So this is the Pokemon we want, but like I said, I want to get a male Deerling. So they're so cute. Look how cute the Deerling is. Um, so we're gonna run away from this one, unfortunately, and keep looking for a male one. And then when we catch one, I hope that it has the ability Sap Zipper, because that's the one I want, not Chlorophyll. Uh, Chlorophyll is an ability that doubles your speed in the sunlight. Um, oh, Carablast, which I think evolves into Excel Gore. I might have that backwards, um, but speaking of. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think we'll be in Sunny Day very often in Harsh Sunlight. And I don't want to use Sunny Day because one, it takes up a move slot, and two, it makes fire type attacks even more powerful. So as a grass type, that would be very dangerous. Uh, Deerling is actually a grass and normal type. So an interesting type combination. It gives us an immunity to ghost types, but we're weak to fighting. So, you know, pros and cons. 
And I think I might have said it already, but just in case, Deerling has a 30% chance of appearing here, so not bad odds. I think we'll definitely find them fairly quickly. Otherwise, it was less than that I do it off screen. And a Fungus, a Grass and Poison type. Very good defensively, not so good uh, for a playthrough in my opinion. Um, so yeah, the ability we do want, uh, Sap Sipper, uh, means that we are not only immune to Grass type attacks, and to be fair, as a Grass type, we would resist them anyway, but this makes us totally immune, which is much better. Um, it also means that they heal us, and I don't remember by how much, if it's like a quarter or a third, um, but either way, that's a nice bonus so I could like switch them into a grass attack. And it also, as a side effect, makes me immune to like all those annoying powder moves, because they are grass type attacks. I guess not poison powder, but sleep powder, stun spore, uh, leech seed, although I don't know if grass types can even be seed in this generation. I don't know. Honestly, at some point they make grass types immune to all those moves. I don't know if it's by gen 5 or not. I feel like it's later, but I could be wrong. So it might only be useful against like damaging grass moves. But even if that's the case, it's still a good ability to have, so I will take it. And yeah, for whatever reason, they gave its hidden ability uh, as Serene Grace, and there's just not that many moves in Deerling's move pool that it would actually affect. I did look into it, and it's like, no, I think I'll just go with the standard move set that I want, and uh, good old Sap Sipper. Hopefully this doesn't take too long now. See, so yeah, what's cool about Deerling is that it changes forms based on the season. Um, another female, unfortunately. Um, so we can catch it as a spring form, because it's currently springtime. And when it becomes winter, it'll look totally different. Same with its evolved form, um, Sawsbuck. So I've never trained one. They don't have the best stats. Um, if, uh, if flow is like a 7.5, then I would say um, Sawsbuck might be like a 7. It has a, a pretty good attack and speed stat, which are honestly the most important ones, but its defenses aren't that great, uh, or its special attack as well. So, um, you know, it's definitely usable. It'll be a fun Pokemon. It has a pretty good move pool. Um, it can learn, like, high, uh, not high jump kick, but regular jump kick as a nice fighting attack for coverage, which actually has pretty good coverage with grass attacks. Um, it can obviously learn different grass attacks. Um, it gets stab from normal moves, which is really cool. So I'll probably teach you like return or another powerful uh, normal type attack. And then, oh, cast form. There's a very wide variety of Pokemon here. We're trying to build up a team. This is definitely a nice route to visit. Um, and then maybe you can learn like dig. I'm not sure what the fourth move will be. I have it written down because I like to plan out my teams ahead of time and kind of figure out what moves they can learn and which ones I want to teach them and which ones give me the most type coverage. So that's actually one of my most, uh, one of the parts I enjoy most of these entire playthroughs is just playing out the teams and kind of uh, brainstorming what Pokemon we might be able to, to catch and raise and have fun with. All right, so I think what I'm going to do, I was gonna just, you know, hopefully stay here until we caught one that was uh, a male and had Sap Zipper. Um, but I think to save time, I want to go until we find a male, which this one is not. Uh, it is a 50-50 gender ratio or sex ratio. I did uh, check that on Bulbapedia, so we've just been getting unlucky here. Better unlucky here than in the gym fight, I guess. Um, what I'll do is I'll find one, I'll catch it, and um, if it's male, it is. And I just won't show its ability on screen. So you guys will not know what its ability is, and if it's the wrong one, then off screen I will catch a different one and name it the same thing and very stealthily switch them. And that way I don't have to uh, do this on screen um, you know, for the entire episode. And no one will be any the wiser. Well, I guess you will because I just told you. But hopefully you prefer that to me just like running around here all day trying to catch a deerling. Um, what else did I want to mention? I wanted to mention that um, Emolga is actually um, a decent Pokemon for this point in the game. But because it doesn't evolve, it's eventually going to be outclassed, and I wouldn't really recommend it. It's a Pokemon that I really wouldn't mind seeing get an evolution in one of the newer games. It seems like it could be a good first stage if it just evolved into something stronger. Um, we actually don't have an electric or oh, we do have a flying type in Archaeops. I was about to say there are so many flying Pokemon, and especially a lot of cool flying Pokemon, that it would be very rare for me to have one 
to have a team without a flying type. I think the only team I've done, at least in a very long time, without a flying type is the um, the Omega Ruby playthrough I'm also recording at the same time. Uh, that's the one where I'm just adding the boss battles uh, to my channel, and the rest I'm doing off-screen, whether it's, you know, whenever I have downtime, essentially. Um, or whenever I have downtime and don't uh, have something to do in this game, like leveling off-screen. So, in that game I have... Well, you know what I'm gonna tell you? If you want to see, you have to go watch it. But it's it's a really fun team. Like, as much as I love this team, and it's not even finished yet, so it's probably not fair to say, that team is like so much. It's a lot of fun. Like, I, I all six Pokemon are just fun to use, and I'm really excited about it. All right, come on, guys. I'm uh, running out of stuff to talk about here. Um, I think my general plan is going to be to catch this Pokemon, um, train up them and our others on screen here against some trainers. And then off screen, I'll get um, our Deerling and our other four Pokemon up to level 33. And then next episode, we will challenge Jim and Clay. Uh, and that's always exciting because I love Jim battles. They're just, they're my favorite part of these playthroughs, which is why I'm uploading them even for the games that I'm not really doing a whole let's play of. Is it just me or does it seem like a less than 30% chance? I feel like we're getting unlucky here, not just in finding female Deerling, but also in just, uh, not really finding too many deerling in the first place. I guess it is raining, so maybe they're all in their little deerling dens, all warm and cozy. But we'll try to find a brave deerling that has ventured forth into the rain. Is it you? No, another female deerling! Uh, what are the odds of finding it four times in a row? That is what? Six and a quarter percent, I think, right? It's finding it once to be 50, 25, 12 and eight. Yeah, 6.25. Now, of course, once we find three, the chances are still 50 50, but like. Like, even now, the next one we find still has a 50-50 chance. And... You are kidding me. I swear, I just looked up. It is a 50-50 chance of finding a male Deerling. Unless there's something weird going on where, like, um, you know, Deerling on this route are more likely to be female. I'm going to change our lead Pokemon. I don't think that would have any effect at all. I can't imagine it would, but I don't know. Let's give it a try getting uh, superstitious at this point and trying to see patterns where there probably are none but all right the good news is we're at least finding more deerling and a male deerling okay now i'm going to try very hard not to knock it out because that would be bad and we don't have any sleep moves on the team so that's unfortunate um yeah i'm a little worried that any of our moves might be powerful enough to knock it out so let's bring in nim and i think i still have scratch if not we could try to use foul play and because it's using Deerling's attack stat, it probably wouldn't be a knockout. Of course, Double Kick is super effective, but luckily we're nine levels higher. We do still have Scratch. Very good. Now, hopefully this will do less than half. Okay, good. It looks like we can use at least one more Scratch. Probably two, but I don't think I'm going to risk it. Now, I know that Deerling can learn Jump Kick. I hope this one doesn't have it yet. Because if you use Jump Kick and miss, you lose like a quarter of your health and damage, I think it is. Uh, okay, Pokeballs and... Um, let's use a Quick Ball since we're still pretty early in the battle. I don't have any Premier Balls uh, yet. I probably should buy some for our six Pokemon, but... Oh, almost had it. That's funny, I said the text that appeared on the screen. Um, not that I haven't seen it before, obviously, so it's probably in my subconscious. I always like, for some reason, catching Pokemon in regular Pokeballs, so I'm going to be a little bit risky here and use that and really hope it doesn't know High Jump Kick. Sorry, Jump Kick. I keep saying High Jump Kick because I had um, a Blaziken in my Omega Ruby. Sorry, my Alpha Sapphire playthrough that knew High Jump Kick. But all right, Deerling is caught. Awesome. The Season Pokemon. Their coloring changes according to the seasons and can be slightly affected by the temperature and humidity as well. Very cool. And we are going to give a nickname to the caught Deerling. And Deerling is going to be named after our hometown. So he is going to be called Asper after Aspertia City. I feel like that's a good selling name for a uh, grass type Pokemon. Um, kind of reminds me of like Arbor a bit, sort of, kind of, not really, but anyway, seems fitting to me. So now we have three Pokemon, um, 
We should probably heal up our Pokemon. Um, let's just use potions for now, since we have all those um, Muma Milks. And we will switch uh, our newest addition to the front of the party. And let's see how they do against some of these trainers. Also, do we have an item that we could do? Let's, uh... I don't know if we have a Miracle Seed. I assume we do, but just in case. I'm actually going to give them the Eviolite. Light. No, not... Ah. And let's give Basa the Charcoal. I haven't lost the charcoal. Expert Bell would be pretty good for him too, but right now we have two fire moves, so we'll save that for later on. The boss actually will have a really amazing type coverage by the uh, end of the game, so that'll actually be like a perfect item for him. All right, let's face a trainer. Let's see what moves we have. Going through trials is the best for growing stronger. Yep, that's why I'm here. Pokemon Breeder April with a Mancino. Yeah, so High Jump Kick is base power 130. It is a very powerful fighting attack. Maybe the most powerful fighting attack. I can't think of one that's better, but there's there's probably something. Uh, besides Z moves, obviously. So our only grass move is actually Leech Seed, which is an amazing move. I love it, but um, it doesn't really do damage, not direct damage. But we do have Double Kick, and we do have Takedown, which gets stabbed, so that's good. Um... So High Jump Kick is 130 base power, I think 90 accuracy, which will be pretty good. Um, but the downside is that if you do miss, which you will do 10% of the time unless you're holding like a, uh, a zoom lens, um, you lose half your HP. So it's a pretty high risk, high reward move. Ouch, that was unlucky. Maybe I should have used uh, Leech Seed there. Oh, and it's a speed tie? That's not good. All right, we held on. Good job, Asper. Proud of you already. And I think we might switch after this one. Well, <laughs> cute charm infatuated Asper, but it doesn't matter because it fainted, which is really cruel. Like, here, fall in love with me and then know that you knocked me out and hurt me. Oh, another Asper. Okay, another Deerling, I should say. That one is seven levels higher and we have 11 HP. So I am going to go ahead and switch into Bossa. The uh, last thing I want is for Asper to faint on our very first battle together. Um, especially because I do plan to teach him Return, almost certainly, at some point in the game. And like I said, Return is based on your friendship rating with your Pokémon. So, um, the higher your friendship, the more damage it'll do. Let's do Heat Crash, because I imagine Deerling is pretty light. That's got to do a lot of damage to this, this poor little Deerling. And it did. Down goes Deerling. Very good. And now we use some more healing items. And oh, do I have two charcoal? I think I do. That's right. I chose. And we do have a miracle seed and a silk scarf. So we have we have so many good items. We have leftovers. Need to get more Pokemon so I can uh, so I can have ones to use it on. Um, let's use it on Asper. I think we're fairly fast, but not like I think it's like base speed of 100 or 95 or something. So it's fast, but there could be Pokemon later in the game that are faster. Freshwater. Actually, no, we're not. We are hurt so bad. Let's use a lemonade. A soda pop would also do, but I don't know where those are, so just to save time, we'll just go with that. All right, let's see what else we can find here. How about you? Are you a trainer? Pouring rain, fighting Pokemon. Now, is that like Pokemon battling, or do you have fighting Pokemon? Paris Lady Nicole only has one, and it is a cast form. Cast form is really cool. It changes based on the weather. I actually want to train it. I didn't want to train a cast form, but I saw a video from um, a Drive Red where he did a, a playthrough of, I think it was Emerald with just cast form. Uh, he didn't use the moveset that I would use if I trained one, personally. I think I would do Rain Dance, um, Surf, Thunder, and. No, sorry. Not Surf, Weather Ball. Um, let's use Leaf Seeds. It's going to be a long battle. Oh, Powder Snow, that's super effective. That's not good. But it's not an Ice-type, it's, it's a Water-type right now. So I actually didn't do that much. Okay, I was thinking it would do more. 
And Powder Snow does have a secondary effect, but it's not freezing. I think it's like lowering speed, maybe? So I think Leech Seed was a really good choice. Um, but if I did train a cast form, if I do train a cast form, I'd love to do Rain Dance, Hail, Weather Ball, and Thunder. Um, because I could then use, uh, let's see, I think Takedown is probably our strongest attack here, even though it will do recoil damage and it's not totally accurate. Ember is also super effective, but also does not get stabbed since Cast Form is water type, so. This is going well. This could be a huge amount of XP here if we beat a Pokemon 8 levels higher than us with the way that XP gain works in uh, the Generation 5 games. Um, so yeah, that could mean you could easily be a water type or an ice type at will. And Weather Ball is a really cool move that, um, when weather is in effect, has 100 base power and changes type to match that weather and to match Cast Form because its ability changes itself to match the weather. Um, except for Sandstorm. It, weather Ball, the move, changes during Sandstorms, but Cast Form does not actually have like a sand um, type. Fan Attack is more accurate than Takedown, so we'll use that to finish off Cast Form, assuming we can survive this Powder Snow. Come on, Asper, you can do it. I believe in you. Yes, good job. I was sure we could, except for like crits. You never know with crits how much that would do, so there was a small chance there. And all right, this is going very well. Level 24, and let's see how close we get to 25. And jump kick, whoa, this is, that's good. That's um, that's very good. So jump kick is kind of like the, uh, the inferior quote unquote version of high jump kick. It has, but it's, it's still an amazing move. Um, it has 100 base power and 90% accuracy, and it does have that small downside to, uh, I think, taking a quarter of your HP or whatever, maybe it's a third, um, if you miss. But you're only going to miss 1 in 20 times, so I'm sure it'll come back to bite us at some point in the future. But uh, yeah, we're definitely going to learn that, and honestly, we'll probably keep it to the end of the game, because Double Kick has 60 base power. So for 40 more base power, I will trade 5% accuracy and um, a chance at recoil damage any day of the week. It's not as good as High Jump Kick, which I don't think we can actually learn, but I'm still very happy. Ah, uh, hear the sad melody of total defeat. All right, well, that was a fun battle, and we uh, now have our um, our fifth member of the team, so that's definitely good. Like I said, I'm going to take a little bit of time off screen. I will train up our entire team, including Asper, to level 33, and when we come back, it'll be time to challenge the Drift Veil, I think it's the city we're just in. Yeah, because there's the Driftvale Drawbridge. So we'll challenge the Driftvale City Gym. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys are too, and I hope you'll stay tuned. As always, like, comment. If you haven't already, please subscribe, or at least like favorite the playlist so you come back here. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. Thank you all for watching. Keep being awesome, and I'll see you next time.